Hello guys, welcome back to today. We're going to look at the best remaining uh, restricted free agents as of August 16th. Now with pretty much one month to go left in the Angel off season, there are 17 remaining our restricted free agents who have yet to get a contract. So we'll start to see those getting signed in the next few weeks, in the next few days even. But I'm going to detail the best remaining ones that still haven't had a contract yet. And it actually surprised me. There's quite a few good players on this video that we'll talk about, and quite a few good players that are still restricted free agents that don't have their contract yet and are a month away from the preseason where we can see some crunch time. Now, I'm going to be talking about five players in this video, and they're all very, very good. So, when I talk about these players, they haven't had a contract yet, and they haven't been able to come to agreement or a month away, so it's starting to become that time where teams are starting to get worried, and especially the fans are starting to get worried. Now, I'm first going to talk about Darnell Nurse for the Edmonton Oilers. He's at age 23, the defenseman for them. He was drafted 7th overall in the 2013 NHL Draft. His 19th season, he had a little bit of a breakout year with Edmonton Oilers. He played a full 82 games. He had 6 goals, 20 assists for 26 points. He had 50.9% cruise percentage. And he really did explode. I feel like he was probably Edmonton's best defenseman last season. And thankfully, he was healthy, unlike a lot of the other roster players. In his short career, he's played 197 games, had 14 goals, 33 assists for 47 points. And of course, this past season was great to raise, rise those numbers. He was fantastic last season, and I felt like he was Edmonton's best defender. He was just a good, decent all-around guy. He would bring a lot of defense, bring a lot of offense, and I felt like he was one of the more underrated players on the Edmonton roster and even in the NHL. He was really, really good, and I feel like he can take that next step next year, too. And while the Edmonton Oilers were struggling, and while there's a lot of key injuries on the team, it seemed like Darnell Nurse always stayed healthy, continued to grow, and continued to get better throughout the season. And he was really one of the players that we actually saw development from and actually saw take a step forward that really needed to. Now, when it comes to his potential contract, there's a lot of different ways this could go. The Edmonton Oilers have about $5 million left in cap space, and I could see him even exceeding that especially if the Edmonton Oilers trade a player or do something there. But, of course, with Andre Sakara gone for the rest of the season, I feel like they would want to trade for a defenseman, maybe even a top-four type guy. So, maybe if they have those trade talks, maybe because Darnell Nurse is still an RFA, maybe he's in potential trade talks to get a better defenseman, to get a top-four defenseman, or whatever Edmonton wants, maybe they try and go for that. It's still a pot. I don't think it's going to happen, but it's still out there. And with Darnell Nurse, I think he is going to get paid, whether it's with Edmonton or a team he gets traded to. Maybe $4 million. I feel like it's in that general area. He played very, very good in that last season, and I feel like he's deserving of that. Um, and for any other team, I feel like the years could go either way. For me, the Edmonton Oilers, I feel like it's going to be three years because that's when a lot of other contracts for defensemen and forwards end, and I feel like they'll want to meet that mark as well. They'll want to have some flexibility there, so I feel like they're going to have them when those other contracts end, like Chris Russell and stuff like that. So, the Edmonton Oilers, I see, I see three years, 4.5, but another team, if he gets treated there, like I said before, it could be completely different. Next up, I have Joshua Morrissey of the Winnipeg Jets, and uh, kind of like Darnell Lewis at age 23. He was at the 13th overall in the 2013 draft, and this past season took, I think, big steps with the Winnipeg Jets, as they did too. In the 2017-2018 season, he played almost a full season, played 81 games, had 7 goals, 19 assists for 26 points, and he had 50.6% goal score percentage. In his career, he's played 164 games, had 13 goals, 33 assists for 46 points. Again, almost the exact amount of numbers as Darnell Nurse, except for the games played. Uh, he had a 50.5% score score percentage in his career, and with the Winnipeg Jets, they're not really a cap strapped, but they might have the intention to sign him for a short-term deal just to just because they have so many other guys expiring in the next couple of years. It was a great year for the Winnipeg Jets and also for Joshua Morrissey. He really took a big step, I feel, with the team. I feel like he did pretty solid defensively, pretty solid offensively. When I saw him, when I saw Winnipeg Jets games, he was a pretty good impact player. And I feel like it was pretty underrated with the Winnipeg Jets. He didn't get the most amount of ice time. Of course, when you have that stack defense, it's pretty hard to. Um, but he didn't get the most amount of ice time. He still played pretty well in the games that he got to play and in the minutes that he got to play, too. So when it comes to the Winnipeg is a cap situation, let's just look at the players that they have expiring after next season. Blake Wheeler, 
Huge contract coming up, even though he'll be at age 32 probably when that contract ends. You got Brandon Tanev, Andrew Kopp, Patrick Laine, Kyle Connor. That's going to be huge ones. Je um, you're going to have um, Mar Marco Dano. You're going to have, uh, of course, Joshua Morrissey if he doesn't go. But then you have Ben Chariot, Joe Morrow. You have Jacob Truba, who just signed the one-year deal. You had Tyler Myers. Uh, they have a lot of the guys that are coming off the books. And just Laine and Connor in general will swallow a lot of that cap. So again, when we look at the contract situation, they might want to go in line of what they did with um, Jacob Truba. Just sign on a one-year deal to kind of avoid being cap-striped for a guy like Line A. Uh, so they can make room for guys like that. So for uh, Morrissey, he's a very, very good player, but I don't know if he's more important than those guys. So I feel like they'll want to have a one-year deal to have that flexibility at least. So what I'm predicting is a one-year $4.85 or $4.85 million contract. I feel like that's right in line of what he's going to get. I feel like he deserves that after a pretty good season um, with the Winnipeg Jets last season. And I feel like because it's a one-year deal, the cap is just going to go a little bit more up than it probably should be. Next up, we have Sam Reinhart of the Buffalo Sabres. Um, he is at age 22, drafted second overall in the 2014 NHL draft, of course. Uh, in his 2017-2018 campaign, he really did break out and become the player that a lot of people pegged him to be, especially second overall worthy. And of course, before this season, he was looking to be a little bit of a bust, but now we see this past season, he really did have a good campaign with the Buffalo Sabres. He played 82 games, had 25 goals, 25 assists for 50 points, had a 52.3% course goal percentage. Um, in his career, he's played 249 games, had 65 goals, 75 assists for 140 points, with a 50.6% course goal percentage. And even though he hasn't been the best for a long time, this past season, he made big strides to become the player. Not quite second overall worthy, but become a great player for the Buffalo Sabres that they really didn't need him to develop into. And it was great to see the Buffalo Sabres not really take a stride because, of course, they were the worst team in the league, but it was key to see some guys develop, like Jack Eichel, um, Sam Reinhardt especially. That was a big step and a big key for the Buffalo Sabres was to see him develop into the player that he should be. And this next season, I'm, I'm really hopeful of what he can bring. I'm really hopeful of what the Buffalo Sabres can bring. And this next season, I feel like it's going to be a great season for both squads involved. For Sam Reinhardt, I feel like his 50 points this past season, I feel like he's going to get more in this next season. So I feel like they're going to want to pay him for that, too. And since the Buffalo Sabres have a lot of cast pace and they don't have the best players in the world, I feel like they're going to not overpay for him, but they're going to pay um, for what they think he'll he'll become. I think he's going to get a $5.5 million contract. Now, I don't know if he's quite earned that already, um, but I feel like they're kind of paying him to, towards what he's going to be, towards that future. And I feel like they're paying him for that, it's not the now, but what he they think he'll become. And I feel like they'll give him four years, maybe four or five. I feel like in that range is pretty solid. Not a bridge deal, but still a lengthy contract. Next up, you have Noah Hannafin of the Calgary Flames, of course, the newly acquired guy in the trade for Dougie Hamilton. And he's still a restricted free agent. I didn't even know that before, like a week ago. And he's still out there. He's still a restricted free agent. The Calgary Flames are still working out with him. He's at age 21, still very, very young. He was drafted fifth overall in the 2015 draft. And he had a decent season last season, but I feel the Calgary Flames are going to be one of those teams that pays for the future, kind of like the Sam Reinhardt. With Noah Hannafin, I think he was a little bit rushed with the Carolina Hurricanes, so I feel like he will still be a fair, very good player. I don't think he'll be fifth overall worthy, though. I feel like he'll still, they're going to be pay for, paying for him for what his future can be, and at age 21, he's still fair, very young for the defenseman, so I feel like it's just the best is going to come for him. In 18 season, he played 79 games at eight, or he had, um, 10 goals, 22 assists for 32 points, and a 56.5% course of percentage. He did get a lot of offensive zone starts, but that's a really, really good number for a defenseman. In his career, he's already played 239 games, has had 18 goals, 65 assists for 83 points, with 52.6% course of percentage. And he's been in the league for quite a long time as a 21-year-old, and might have been a little bit rushed there with the Carolina Hurricanes, but I feel like he'll still become a fair, fair good player and a very good defense for the Calgary Flames. And for next season, that's going to be huge for what his development, how the Calgary Flames do most importantly, and how it comes for Car for Car uh, for Calgary at least. There's a lot of potential with this contract, and it could go a lot of different ways too. For me, I'm predicting a four million dollar contract for two years, kind of like a bridge deal. But with the Cal Calgary Flames, 
I don't know if they're going to want to invest in, t in him long term. They already got a lot of guys that are investing in long term. So I don't know if they'll want to go with Noah Hannafin for that long. I feel like they'll want to see him develop into that key player and before they give him that contract. And while it would be fair to risky if they did now to give him a long term one, and it might be a good one in the future, I feel like they'll want to have kind of like a try me. Like, let's see what Noah Hannafin Han 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 is before we give him that huge contract that we gave in other players. Wow, I just butchered Noah Hannafin's name, did I? Well, back to the video. So for the last player I'm going to mention on this video, it's of course William Nylander. I'm surprised he's still a restricted free agent at this point. The Toronto Maple Leafs like to get their guys signed early. We've seen that before, and I'm kind of surprised that Nylander is still looming here. He's still at age 22. He drafted 8th overall in 2014 draft. The past couple seasons, he's just been straight magic. I think he's the hands down the best player that we'll talk about in this video, but he really showed that this past season. He played 82 games, had 20 goals, 41 assists for 61 points, and to me, while he's a gifted goal scorer, right, and what, I think that was what he was pegged to be, he is a great passer, he's a really gifted playmaker, and he can really do that well too. Uh, he had a 51.4% course for percentage, and in his short career, he's played 185 games, had 48 goals, 87 assists for 135 points with 52 points, 6% course over percentage. And he's been really good with the Toronto Maple Leafs in the last couple of years and has really shown himself to be one of the elite playmakers in the NHL. I feel like it will continue to happen too. With the Toronto Maple Leafs, I feel like giving that core, giving the three-headed monster, the three-youth-headed monster in Marner, Matthews, and Nylander, big, lengthy contracts, is going to be the go, is going to be the route that they go on. I feel like they're going to want to sign these guys long-term, so that when these guys eventually become the stars that they are going to become, they don't have to pay them that much more. For me, I see the uh, contracts being around a pass neck type level, I see it being 6.5 to 7, I see it being 6.5 to 7 million dollars. That's about, I think, the sweep spots, and I feel like 6.5 is going to be where it is. This past season, you could certainly make the argument, of course, Dylan Larkin getting signed for 6.1 was huge for the Toronto Maple Leafs and getting you know, Nylander's contract lower because, of course, Dylan Larkin is a center, uh, and of course, he didn't play with guys like Matthews, so he didn't have that advantage. So you could make the case that um, Larkin was a better player than Nylander, and you could certainly make the case to lower that contract. So for the Toronto Maple Leafs, they're in a good position with the Nylander talks. I feel like Nylander certainly wants to stay there on a pretty, pretty good team. So while I'm going to predict more than Larkin, I'm going to predict $6.5 million. I'm going to pick a lengthy, lengthy contract. I'm going to predict seven years until he goes, until he's a 29-year-old. And I feel like at that point, he can choose wherever he wants to go if he wants to stay with the Toronto Maple Leafs. But I feel like that having that long-term contract at 6.5 is going to be really, really good in like four or five years when the cap goes up. I feel like it's going to be a great contract then, and I feel like signing him long-term now is in the best interest of the Toronto Maple Leafs and probably probably Nylander. He wants to stay on a good team, stay at the Toronto Maple Leafs. They have a lot of different options, and of course, with the contract signing like Pasternak, Dylan Larkin, they have some great comparables to lower that price. And with Nylander, he's a great player, but I feel like he'll be a little bit stolen in the money. I feel like he's going to get some Kyle Dubas magic. I feel like Kyle Dubas is going to lower that a little bit, possibly the $6 million. I feel like he can work his magic, and I feel like we'll see a pretty low contract here. Now, there's some other restrictive free agents that I could talk about here. You got Shea Theodore of the Vegas Golden Knights. You got Miles Wood of the New Jersey Devils. You got Nick Ritchie of the Anaheim Ducks. There's some really, really solid RFAs still out there that have yet to be signed. Signed, and I think Andre Kasha was just signed last yesterday. I think he was like a UFA or something. Um, but another player just signed. But with the RFAs, it's a decent class that is still not got signed in a month. We can see some players still not signed, and that's happened before. We can see that again for sure. And again, it's kind of interesting to see how many decent players are still in the restricted free agent class and how many almost superstars there are. I mean, William Nylander is still an RFA. Noah Hannafin is still an RFA. So there's some really, really good players that are still out there and still looking for a contract from their teams. And of course, as I make this video, yes, top 10 UFAs, top 10 remaining UFAs will probably be coming. Just be patient with me. But that is what I have for today, guys. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe. Tell me down below, what do you think of the remaining RFA class? What do you think of Nylander not being signed? What do you think of all the other guys I've listed here down below? And I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Thank you.